everybody, this is Mike, also known as Sergeant First Class Retired Mike Reyes, uh, here with Warrior Beat, and I am here to honor and celebrate Black History Month uh, through hand drumming, which is really appropriate because hand drumming was invented in Africa. Um, these beautiful drums that I'm sitting behind, uh, we usually associate with Latin or Hispanic music. Uh, but they come straight from the continent of Africa, uh, mainly the West African region. Um, and we call these drums conga drums, conga drums. Uh, but they were originally uh, a combination of two different drums. Uh, one called the makuta drum, uh, which was either a barrel-shaped drum or a cylinder-shaped drum. Uh, drum with a piece of goat skin stretched across the top uh, for the drum head. Uh, and that is from the Bantu people, the B-A-N-T-U. Uh, Bantu is a very large number of African people uh, who speak a bunch of different languages, but you can find the biggest concentration of Bantu people in the Republic of the Congo. Uh, as well as the Yoruba people, uh, who are basically from what is now called Nigeria. And um, Yoruba people, they had uh, different drums and different uh, rhythms uh, in order to observe their religion and sometimes also just to party and have fun. Um, so the groove I'm going to be teaching you is actually uh, from the Yoruba people, uh, but the drums themselves... <laughs> Uh, come straight from Africa, uh, and it is a classic example of how a really dark part of history, uh, a bad thing, produced a really awesome and cool thing. Um, so basically what happened is when Europeans started um, enslaving Africans and bringing them to all these places in the Caribbean, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, Cuba, the Dominican, um, of course those people brought their traditions with them, um, meaning their drums and their religion. Um, and there was a huge period of time where, of course, uh, when you get conquered by the Spanish, um, they are very Catholic and they were not allowed to play drums. Uh, and the one of the only places in the New World that people were allowed to play uh, the African drums was actually New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, which is where they have a super rich jazz and um, drumming history. Um, but yeah, so places like the island of Cuba or Puerto Rico, um, they retained more of this hand drumming tradition. And that is why we kind of associate these types of drums now uh, with Latin or Hispanic music. Um, but this is right from the Yoruba and the Bantu people. Uh, the Yoruba people actually uh, played... At first, this drum called the bata drum, which is a two-headed drum. One side is small and one side is large, and they come in three sizes. Um, and a lot of people think that's why congas come in sets of three as well. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but it's uh, it's kind of a cool correlation to think about. So uh, the conga drum, um, the conga drum means that it is a barrel stave-shaped drum uh, with a skin across the top of it. Uh, sometimes you use a buffalo skin or uh, goat skins were originally used. And uh, basically, they called it a long time ago, the Europeans, when they first saw the Makuta drums or the Nagoma drums, uh, that's N-G-O-M-A or Makuta is M-A-K-U-T-A. -A. Um, they saw them in the region that's called the Congo. And over time, the language developed and these became conga drums. So that's kind of where this, this art form uh, originated and came from. Uh, the rhythm I'm gonna teach you is called bembe uh, from the Yoruba people. Um, and they, like I said, they had, at first, they had uh, the bata drum. Um, they also played this instrument, that's what we now call the shakere. Uh, in Africa, they call this the Agbe, A-G-B-E, with an accent mark. Uh, but basically, it's a gourd with a net strung with beads wrapped around it uh, to make like this shaky, uh, most people are most familiar with like a maraca or a shaker. So this is like a real loud maraca or shaker. But the cool difference between uh, the shaker, uh, and depending on where you're at in the world, sometimes you spell the name of this instrument with C-H, like shaker. 
Um, yeah, but the shake array, the cool thing about it is the gourd itself makes a tone. So instead of just this shaky sound, you can also get this bass tone. Out of it. And this, you can find different versions, shapes, sizes, colors of this all over the continent of Africa. Um, it is just a gourd with a net of beads around it uh, to make this kind of texture of a sound. Or, and I'm going to show you how to play this. Uh, throughout these four weeks uh, that we're honoring Black History Month, I'm going to show you how to play some rhythms on all three of the size conga drums, as well as the shaker ray, and uh, in Spanish, what we call the campana, which is the cowbell. Now, the cowbell has a cool story, too. Um, the Yoruba people didn't have cowbells. Um, nobody in Africa did. They couldn't work metal this way uh, to make the bell. So what they used is the blade of the hoe, the garden tool, um, that in Spanish we call the wataka, and they had a big nail, like a metal nail, and they would play to get that kind of sound um, because that's what they had to play on. Uh, and of course they had uh, the capability to kind of hollow out a log or like put some staves of wood together and stretch a goat skin across it. Uh, the original drums, uh, if you look at the really old photos, they had like wooden posts sticking out where all of these lugs are. And then there was a string attached to the rim and that's what tensioned the drum. And then later on, the drum became that barrel shaped drum and they would take the skin and they would nail the skin to the top of the drum, usually with like the big brass tacks. Um, so if you look at the conga drums that were originally used like in Dizzy Gillespie's band or uh, uh, from way back from, you know, 40s, 50s, you can still see uh, the piece, the wooden barrel with the, uh, with the brass nails uh, holding the skin on. Um, so, of course, as technology and manufacturing gets better, uh, we now have the version and these gorgeous drums that uh, I am sitting behind now, which is these beautiful finished wood drums uh, with what we now call tuning lugs, right? So uh, we can work metal better and we can obviously uh, do a lot of wood crafting uh, to get beautiful sounds and beautiful drums. Um, that way you can tune the drums without using heat uh, to shrink down the skin. You can just tension uh, the Lux. So over the next four weeks, we're going to be talking about uh, Yoruba rhythm. And uh, if you've ever been to New Orleans, uh, they are also famous for the voodoo there. Um, and so the Yoruba religion, um, there are two big offshoots uh, of that religion other than the one itself. And that is Santeria, which is what they practice in Cuba and Puerto Rico and parts of Mexico even as well as uh, New Orleans has voodoo. And voodoo is an offshoot of the original Yoruba religion and the Palo Mayombe religion from Africa. Um, so if you know anybody that is into Santeria or if they're into Palo Mayombe or they're into voodoo, uh, that all came from the people who invented these rhythms. So there is a little bit of history about how what we do here at Warrior Bee and how my Hispanic culture, um, my heritage, is actually uh, an African culture uh, originally that was kind of brought all over the world, uh, unfortunately because of slavery. But the result is, is that people all over the world uh, play hand drums and these types of instruments and we create awesome rhythms. So again, it's a classic example of something bad being turned into something very positive um, because without uh, the African heritage, uh, A, I wouldn't be talking to you as a uh, educational director of a warrior beat, um, but we wouldn't, we may not even have exposure to these kind of drums uh, that I love to play so much. So stay tuned for the next four weeks. Uh, I'm going to be taking you piece by piece through this rhythm called the Bembe, the B-E-M-B-E. -E. And uh, we're going to learn each drum part, uh, the shaker part, and the cowbell part. So that way, whether you have two people dr drumming with you or five, you can get everybody together and show them their part and create a really cool African rhythm. 
So stay tuned and uh, we'll get started with first the smallest and highest drum part. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in a minute. video uh, for the celebration of Black History Month uh, on our series of four videos that will show you how to play the bembe from the Yoruba people uh, in Africa. So the bembe is a rhythm that is based on six notes. Um, for the musicians out there, it's either in 6-8 time or 12-8 time. So if you play an instrument or you read music, uh, that will make sense. And if you don't do either one of those things, it's okay, uh, because I'm going to break it down for you very simply and show you how uh, to play the bembe rhythm. So before we get to the actual patterns, I need to show you how to get some basic tones out of the conga drum or the djembe or whatever it is that you have. Now, the cool thing is, is if you have uh, one or two people, I should say two, um, you can get a really cool bembe rhythm just with like a bigger drum and a smaller drum, regardless is of if you're playing uh, two different sized djembe's or uh, a set of conga drums, or maybe you only have two congas because a lot of times they only sell them with, uh, with two at a time. Uh, but if you happen to have three, I'm gonna show you how to get uh, three people collectively playing the bembe and uh, of course, then we're going to do a little shaker ray playing and some cowbell playing too. So, um, without any further delay, I'm going to show you how to get some basic tones out of the conga drum. So, when most people walk up to any kind of a hand drum, djembe, uh, cajon, anything that you might have, um, their most natural tone that they're going to get is what we call the open tone in hand drumming. And the way we do that properly is we identify our largest row of knuckles in our hand. And then we find them on the palm of our hand, right? And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to strike the drum and let this edge, and I'm going to tilt the, like, see the edge, the top edge of the head here? We're going to try to hit that edge with this large row of knuckles, the underneath side, so that we get a sound like this. Okay, and we call it the open tone because we're not leaving our hand down and muting it or muffling it. So we're just hitting it and coming off the drum. Okay, so take a second and try to get um, your hand position and try to get some good open tones out of whatever type of drum you're playing. So it should sound like this and you'll hear the full tone of the drum. might ring a little bit that's okay um, you want all you want that drum to sing to get a good open tone okay and since I have three drums I'll show you some open tones on all three okay so once you get the open tone uh, the next type of tone we're going to use is the bass tone and the bass tone if you find that same row of knuckles on your hand and you imagine that somebody took like a magic marker and they drew a line and then they just kept going around the whole edge of your hand like this, you're going to take that portion of your hand and you're basically going to palm strike the center of the drum so that you can get the biggest, deepest tone out of the hand drum. If you're playing a djembe, this will be a real deep, big tone um, that you will definitely notice. So go ahead and try a couple of bass tones. You know, start with your dominant hand, whether you're right-handed or left-handed. Just play some bass tones. Try the other hand. Okay, so, so far we've done the open tone and the bass tone. 
And then the third type of sound we're going to use is what we call the slap. And here that is across the drums. Now the slap is actually the hardest one to get. So don't get frustrated if you don't get this one right away. Um, so the idea of the slap is that instead of hitting the edge with that large row of knuckles, we're gonna slide our hand just slightly forward so that that same edge that we're hitting is just about splitting your palm from top to bottom, okay? And what happens is, is when you hit with your palm of your hand, your fingertips whip down and create the slap sound, okay? Now, the other important thing about a slap is when you finish the slap movement, you can, I don't know if you can tell, but my hand is in this A-frame, I call it the A-frame type shape, okay? So my big knuckles in my hand are the top of the A-frame, just like the roof of a house, and then my fingers are one side, and the palm of my hand is the other side, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm creating a little air pocket, a little resonating chamber, for the slap sound to escape from between my hand and the drum. Now, if I do it flat-handed, I get what we call a muffled tone, and that's not a slap. So what I want is this kind of center of my palm to get that, hit that edge, and then my fingertips to whip down, because my finger, the tips of my fingers are actually what create that crack sound of the slap. So, Give those a try. Try some on your dominant hand. Okay, so we started with the open tone, the bass tone, and the slack tone. Now, the other thing we're gonna do is what we call the palm fingertip technique, okay? So we're gonna kind of back step, and remember that bass tone, okay? So what we wanna do to get a palm fingertip technique going is we're gonna hit the drum in the center, just like we're making a bass tone, okay? And you can do this slightly off the center when we're in the palm fingertip technique section because you might need to position your hands to get a slap or an open tone so to keep that other hand out of the way. But what we're going to do is we're going to come down on the drum with our palm and as soon as that hits we're going to roll our fingers back up and we're going to play a second note with our fingertips. So what happens is I play with the palm and then I play with the fingertips and I kind of springboard my hand back up so that it resets my hand to play a, another palm. Okay, so a bunch of those in a row looks like this. On the other hand. Okay. So that is the palm fingertip technique. And the three main tones plus the palm fingertip technique is all of the techniques we're going to need to get us through this bembe rhythm over the next four weeks. So let's get into it. Um, so a, a big difference between the Hispanic tradition of this drumming and the West African tradition of this drumming is uh, in a lot of Hispanic music, the solo person out of the three drummers is always the smallest or the highest drum. Uh, in Spanish, we call the quinto. And he always gets to just rip and play all the cool solos while these two people are playing support rhythms for him to solo underneath. Now, it's important to know that a bembe rhythm also includes uh, dancers and singers. Um, it's a bembe is a, a word for like a gathering or an event, um, and it has people singing and people dancing, as well as people, you know, playing drums uh, so that people have something to sing and dance to. So we, in African tradition, the soloist is the biggest drum, a <coughs> excuse me, a lot of the time. Uh, so it's kind of the opposite in that fashion. So we are going to start with the smallest drum because that person, that man or woman, is going to keep the time 
uh, for the other people. So, on the smallest drum, we're only going to use two of our sounds. We're going to use the open tone and the slap, okay? So, like I told you, the bembe rhythm is based on six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, to play the high drum part, we are going to play two notes at a time, and we're going to play notes one and two, then we're going to not play anything on three. Then we're going to play on four and five, and we're not going to play on six. So if I count it off and I'll clap the notes we're hitting on. If I do one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three. Four, five, six. Okay? So hopefully you can try that with me. If you want, I'll count you off and we will clap it together. So remember, we're clapping on one and two. We're going to let three go by. Then we're going to play a uh, clap on four and five. And then we're going to let six go by. So it looks like this. Ready? Clap it with me. One, two, three. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Good. Okay, so to apply that to the highest drum, we are going to, first you could try doing it just with two open tones, right? You could do one, two, three. Four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. But in the bembe rhythm, the first note of those two notes is the open tone, and the second note is a slap. So instead of, we're gonna get one, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Okay? And because you're playing those same two notes over and over again, you can actually do it in either order. I'm a left-handed person, so I'm doing the open with my left, and then I'm slapping with my right. But we could easily do it the other way. We could do one, three, four, five, six. One, three, four, five, six. So open, slap, rest. Open, slap, rest. Open, slap, rest. Open, slap, rest. Okay, and that is your first part of the bembe rhythm. So I am going to put that to the metronome and show you how it works. Now I'll let you listen to my machine here. So the high beep is always the first note of the six, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. And this will be a little fast, but I just want you to get the idea of where we're going with it. So here we go. So that was a little quick, but you can see where it's going to end up. So just take your time, go really slow, and just go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just get the sounds right, get the timing right. And if you really struggle with the timing, Use, it, use your claps like we did during this video. Just one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so good luck. That is your high drum part and your first part that you learned to the bembe. So to take it out, I am going to play a, eventually what is going to be all three drum parts by myself. So let's see how this goes. Ready? Alright, 
So that's what it's going to sound like with all three drummers. Then we're going to add the shaker ray and the cowbell and fill it up and make it really awesome. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll be doing this for the next four weeks of Black History Month. So have fun with that. Work it out. And uh, I will see you next week.